All right, folks, welcome back to For Johan. Things are looking up. We are on the path back to glory. We're, we're a little bit before the game that I said we, we were returning for. That's the uh, the fixture again. I can't even remember who we were playing. Uh, Natch Breider, excuse my forgetfulness. But you can see right there, results are on the turn. We've had that since you were last with us, uh, that 1-0 defeat away at Manchester City. We've played several games, mostly in the in the league, and we've won all of them, including big games over table-topping sides, Willem and Feyenoord. In fact, we've not finaled out of the cup, so we beat them 2-0 back-to-back. Lovely stuff. The only game we've lost in that run is in a 1-0 reverse at Alkmaar. I think if you look at the stats, you'll get an idea as to... <sighs> anyway, that was that was what it was. We just couldn't score. We missed so many easy chances, so many skewed shots. And when we did get it on target, the keeper was decent and made the save. But other than that, we've been pretty darn good. Uh, although I would say in that run... There's only been one away league game. So, you know, swings and roundabouts, isn't it? But if we're winning all our home games, I don't really care. And all that leaves us in third. And suddenly, we're only six points off the top spot. And that's Ardo. I fancy us to catch Ardo, just two points behind Feyenoord. Look at that, we a meteoric rise to, to the top of the table. Fantastic stuff. Um, Chemistry-wise, ignore this big red section. Although that is coming down, it was nearly... Right at the the far left side of the bar there, so you know there's a few issues in the in the team. Uh, Nick Viergiver is unhappy and has lost all trust in me. Well, that's good because he's on his way out. He's leaving for uh, on a free. He's joining Newcastle in July. I don't think he's a bad player. I don't think he's a great player, certainly. But I think we've probably made an error in letting him go for free. I, I must admit, I didn't realise his contract was was up in the summer. But also, he was never going to sign a new one, given that. He seemed to think that he was above Mitchell Dykes. And unfortunately for me now, Mitchell Dykes, because we've sold Huntelaar, I've got oh, so much to catch up on. Um, Huntelaar is no longer with the club, so he's no longer a team leader. Mitchell Dykes is now a team leader. So if he wants to to, to take on the team leader for that, for that slot and have a row about it, then I think I'll have the backing of the rest of the squad. Otherwise... It's been going pretty well, as I say. I brought you back because it's deadline day, and we, we're moving a few players out. We're notably moving out a few, a few youngsters. But what we've done is we've sold Shane Nunnally. He's gone out to Chelsea for two point nine million. I just didn't see that he was. I mean, he's everybody knows. Well, I know him, and I'm sure you guys know him from the old FMs. But I just don't see. I just don't see it there. I mean. He's lacking determination and work rate, which are always a key tri uh, factor in your youngsters. So he's missing that. And to be quite honest, he's, he's just quick. So, you know, £3 million pounds ne nearly. We'll get 40 or 50%, I think it was, of, of anything that they make on that. So, you know, for a club like ourselves, who haven't got a huge amount of money to spend this year... That's that's good business, and what we've done is we so we haven't got a huge amount of money, so I spent it, most of it on a on a seventeen year old from from Lyon, um, yeah, Amine Guiri or Guiri Guiro Guiri Guiri. Basically, I a bit of a shout out. I watched the Northman's Wonder Kid striker prediction, and I like the look of him, so I picked him up for a little under £4 million. Pounds. We also signed a, a player that will be uh, familiar to a lot of people, Asamoa Gian. I just needed another striker, really, just to, to fill the void, because obviously with letting Huntelaar leave on a free, he was just not, not really any use to me. Uh, we've also let a couple of the other striking options go out on loan. So it just seemed that it was it was okay. You know, it, it was a cheap deal. I mean, he's on thirty grand a week. But we'll probably let him go in the summer. I'm sure there'll be a club that'll that'll take him on from somewhere, um, you know. Yeah. So it was an odd signing, but he knows how to put the ball in the back of the net. You know, 16 finishing. So if he gets a chance in the penalty area, I'm sure he'll take it. Other transfers kicking off. We've got obviously Via Givet is on his way out. Um, Oriuela. Oh, I'm so bad at these names. Right back. We. He wanted to leave for Benfica. I mean, he's not really been playing. I've been playing Veltman at right back instead. So five, uh, six point five million pounds all told. I'll take that all, all the way to the bank, no problem. There's a, a youngster going out, so we'll we'll dodge that one. Midfielders wise, 
Uh, Donny van der Beek has had a bid for, again from Banf- Benfica. They're trying to restructure their squad around us. I rejected that bid of £8.5 million pounds in total. Noah Lang was a, a youth prospect that we identified early on in the save. We had bids from Chelsea and Manchester City. Fortunately, Manchester City was higher and he decided that that's the team he wants to join. £6.5 million pounds is the deal. So I'm quite pleased with that. I think, you know, we, if we if we sell Lang and Oriuela, that's that's £13 million pounds plus that we're going to have available to spend in the transfer window. Unfortunately for us, the transfer window closes in a little over 12 hours, so we're not going to really be able to, to invest it. But we'll we'll see if there's anything out there. Clive has gone out on loan uh, to PSV. That's iffy, isn't it? We hope he doesn't absolutely destroy the rest of the Dutch league while he's at PSV. And we rejected a twelve million pound bid for Hakim Zayak. Uh, Atletico Madrid are very interested. Unfortunately for Zayak, he came back from his injury and picked up another injury pretty much straight away. So, um, yeah, where's the injuries on this bit? I thought it was. I mean, I've got two screens the same here. You know, I haven't changed these at all, so I don't know why. That's should we pop career milestones? No, we've already got that one. Bear with, we'll find something of interest. Happiness. No, nope, we got that. Don't tell me they've made more plans. No, nope. don't tell me they've made more spaces than widgets. That's that seems odd to me. If the game has made more training, injured. That's not on there. We'll go with that. So, I mean, it's it's full of detail, isn't it? All you need to know is he's injured. So, let's have a look. So, injuries. Here we go, Zach. He's out for four to six weeks. He's got strained, sprained knee ligaments. Last time it was his ankle ligaments. Uh, we also brought in Jordan Lukaku. God, I'm, I'm missing loads, aren't I? Transfers. Let's, I mean, there he is. Jordan Lukaku's coming on loan. We just need another left back, really. Um, I was a little bit concerned about the... Obviously, via giver, I just don't trust him anymore. And Mitchell Dykes just needs a backup. So, yeah, he's come in and he'll he'll just play in the rotation option when needed, when he's not injured with a calf strain. So, that's great. We've got four days until the Brady game, but it is transfer deadline day. So, we've got a few hours left to kill and hopefully we'll be able to maybe do a few deals. I'm going to bring them to you breaking live as and when they happen. So, there's Noah Lang confirmed. He leaves. He's not going to be a player that will miss but I think he's going to be a great player in the future I think he is better than the chain on the league but obviously he's got a bit you know it's, it's a it is a bigger deal so that's also Oriuela leaving and there we go Clive rejects the loan move to PSV so he's not going to be a problem for us out at another club let's uh, just take a look at the funds available now so we've got 60,000 in the chance in the wage budget and 8 million we'll have another 5.75 on top so we'll have around 14 million pounds to spend Let's just take a quick look at the transfer list. Just oh, Danny Welbeck, should, should, could we? Could we? Could we? No, we couldn't. Six point sixteen point two five, way over our budget. I mean, where do we need to strengthen? Let's just take a look at the depth, if we may. Where are we strongest? Oh, I mean, we're clearly strongest in this third or well, half of the pitch. So the front third, it's th- the front third, the front half of the pitch. I'm going to say the last two thirds. Where we're weakest is probably at fullback, and even though I've signed on loan Lukaku, you can see there that rating wise that is the, and the goalkeeper as well. So, are we going to spend money on a goalkeeper in our first year? Are we going to spend money on a, on a new left back, even though we bought one in? I'm not convinced. In terms of central midfield, I'm never going to play Zayak there, but I am going to play Van der Beek, who's class, Schoener, and Sinkrav. And maybe central midfield is a is an option that we can. That we can boost. If there's a deal to be done, we'll do it. That's that's my motto. If there's deals, we'll do them. Whether there's deals, I don't know. Fabian Delph, would that be a good option? He's certainly got the experience. He's not in favour. It's, it's within the price range, but I imagine he'll want a ridiculous wage. £80,000 a week. I did look at this surprise. We had to Manafa. PSG agrees £170,000 a week for this lad when they signed him. Let that sink in. Stealing a living. Now, Montalivo, he's probably a little bit too old for what we're trying to achieve. I just maybe there's just not the market for us this this January. Maybe we'd be better waiting and hoping that I'll keep my job. There is Shinji Kagawa. I mean, he's a class act, but they want twenty nine million pounds, and he'd want over hundred grand a week. I just don't think this, we'll see how the, the window plays out. Manchester City want Frankie De Jong. Now, Frankie De Jong is clearly going to be decent. I don't know why Man City wants him. 
if I was managing Man City, I wouldn't be bidding for him. But they've offered uh, quite a low offer for two point nine million pounds. Frankie De Jong wants the deal to go through. He wants to discuss terms, and I'm concerned about my position at the club becoming weaker by rejecting bids. So I think we're going to try. We'll we'll try and get around seven million for him. I think that's they were going three point seven. I think they'll go to five, maybe five point five. They do go to five point five plus forty percent of profit. I think that's not a bad deal. I don't. He's he's not been used by us. So I think, I mean, we're losing a lot of players here. Maybe we do definitely need now to, to make a move in the transfer window to buy a midfielder. So that's going to give us around £18 million to spend. But who is the man to to come in and make a difference and just, well, sit on the bench, really? Hassani. Never heard of him. I mean, he's, he's done okay for, for Altmar in the few games that he's played in the league this year. Is he a good option for us? Probably not. Hmm. Maybe it's time to revisit some of Northman's 10-year future wonder kid midfielders. Hmm. But I need someone now. If you haven't seen those videos, do go and check them out. They are um, pretty amazing stuff. I don't know what to do. You'll... I'll cut a lot of this out, so you won't see me just scrolling down a list of midfielders. So to the, the chap who suggested that we sign Xavi, I think it was on episode one, yeah, we, we can do a deal for £1.6 million. Pounds. I mean, he's on £170,000 a week from, from Al Sad, so, and he, he probably rightly thinks that we've got no chance of meeting his demands, so that goes nowhere. There goes De Jong. Five point, uh, excuse me, f uh, a deal for 5.5, we get five of that into the transfer kitty. I think Man City will be releasing him on a free in a few years' time because I just don't see him making it. I'll eat my words. No problem. So let's keep looking for a central midfield slash attacking central midfield if we can. Okay, Gelson Fernandez. Fee and contract agreed. Now, I know what you're thinking. He's 31 and he's not brilliant. But he is a decent backup. I mean, they're making a big profit out of me. Ooh, I don't like them giving clubs profits. So they're going to flip him for quite a substantial profit. Well, I mean, the deal is 2.4 million pounds. I think he's a, he's good physically, so even at 31, he's a good a good athlete. I mean, mentally, he's all there as well. He's not getting cards. So, yeah, I think, I think as a backup option and as a ball winner, which we do use in the system, uh, I believe. What's this turn out to be? Sorry, it's not ball when it's box to box. Let's just let's just evaluate the situation. Yeah, okay, he's all right in that role. So he does come in. He does give us that option. Uh, yeah, I think I think assuming he's not prone to injury, because we're running out of time. It's half past five now. It's tea time. Let's get some dinner on the table. And there it is. So it'll be two point five million out of the eighteen point five. I'm quite happy with that. I know he's he's not fantastic, as I say. And he, he's certainly been around, hasn't he? I mean, he's played in England twice with Leicester and Man City. First time in Holland, though. Is he a, a, an Ajax player? Yeah, I think we'll do that deal on deadline day. And we'll, we'll, we will have a look to see if anyone's been added to that transfer list. Uh, see if anyone could tickle our fancy. We've got Kieran Trippi, of course. The name familiar to Potters. Pushing the Potters fans. Zinchenko is on the transfer list. I mean, he can play everywhere. He's like a good Jeff Cameron. I don't think there's any real... There's decent options, but not great options that we could entertain. So, oh, Michael Carrick. Now, that might have been a midfielder I should have gone for. Although physically, he's worse than me. So that's the, the window shut then. And I think we've done okay there. We've sold fringe and youth team players for good money. Well, well decent money anyway. Uh, I would have liked more, but it, it is money. We definitely, we definitely sold them for money, right? So let's get those players in. Oh, we can't register Greer. So yeah, we're. Just, I mean, Donny Van der Beek. I'm glad we kept him. I was a bit concerned that he might kick off. Improving across the board, and I think a potential star. So if you're a few years into FM18, if you've managed to play a bit more than I have, do check him out. We're going to push on now to the Brada game. I'll see you there, pitch side, with a bit of a lineup. Hopefully, we'll be able to continue our winning ways. We are at home, uh, Brada 
are in the relegation playoff area. So it should be a win. And hopefully we can take second place and, and gain some ground on Arden and Haag. Again, not words I ever thought I'd have to say managing Ajax. Okay, slightly annoying on the eve before the game and something that I probably forgot during the transfer window because I was I was so distracted by the other departures. The departure of Abuela to Benfica has left a gap at right back and obviously Veltman picked up a knock. So he's got a, a, a bruised ankle, I think it was. So he's back in a couple of days. I mean, he, he could play looking at those ratings in terms of his fitness, but we're not going to risk him. We're going to play a kid from the from the academy. Um, Dave Z Dave, Dave Davis is going to play. David Davis from Wolves is going to play <laughs> instead. Uh, we will have Veltman on the bench, though, just in case. And hopefully we won't have a problem. So let's give Galson a squad number. He wants 19. We have 19. Let's do 19. Right. So first game after the window. No real change to the first team squad. The only change is, a, is an enforced one. So it's as we were in the previous few games, except as if we comes in on right back so fingers crossed today we can record a win record the w and push up further up this league although we've been dominating in the possession here's schoener takes a free kick towards Younes dolberg to young lash didn't really get control of that strike over the crossbar no real threat on the goal keeper was was scrambling a little bit if he got that on target i think it would have gone in but not to be so as we approach our time for stats guys we've absolutely dominated the first half, what we've the only chance we've seen is that Sim de Jong strike that went lashed into the crowd. We need to be better. I mean, they've not even had a strike. Um, so I'm fully expecting them to come out and win the game. So let's make a change. Schoener is a miserable person. So let's get Sink Graven on in place. And I think we'll take off Sim de Jong as well. Nuri's been good when he's come on. We tried to convince him to reconsider his retirement that's scheduled for 2020, but he turned us down. This isn't going well, is it? And they've got a free kick. It's towards that back stick where we've looked so risky. Oh, that was a, a, a brave challenge from the youngster, and he got away with it. David Neres, can we swing the counter? Nuri, Nuri goes wide, crosses, and there is Mitchell Dykes. He gets the goal on the 72nd minute that gives Ajax the lead. Against a stubborn broader side. It was a chackle from the, the debutant, uh, Zef Wee. I'm saying his name wrong. Zef, I'm going to go with Zef Wee as though he's some sort of Belgian or French player, but he's not. Zef Wee made the challenge that was that was for, not fortunate. It was perfectly timed and executed. And uh, set the moves going. So five minutes to go. We get another, there's another opportunity for someone. Hopefully it's not going to, is that Thierry Ambrose? Hopefully he's not going to punish us from this range. Just have a shot from nowhere. We get the ball back. That's launched long towards Dahlberg. He does not get there. That was a little bit out of control, but they're giving it straight to Dykes. And hopefully now we can build and maybe maybe take the game away from Brother. That's a good challenge for a man on the stretch on a yellow card. Anyway, it's a little bit out of control. I think both teams aren't passing the ball particularly well. As Yunus, there you go, you see a bit of a deflected effort. Gives it to Dolberg. Yunus drifts one wide. We've not been at our best, which is a little bit disappointing because we've been pretty good in, in recent weeks. And then as soon as I turn the camera, no, he's picked up a knock. So I think we're going to take him off and we're going to throw on. Who should we throw on in that attacking central role? I think it's... Well, I mean, we've only really got the one option. It will be... Or have we? Could put Van Beek there and, and give Gelson his debut. I think we'll do that. So we'll, we'll try that. I should probably go to the counter system, and I might regret it. But here's David Neres, a minute and a half to go. Gives it to Fernandez, to Van de, to de, I can't even say his name. Oh, I thought that was in. Whistled over the bar. We've I think we've had enough chances to justify winning the game. I don't think we've seen anything from Brada, but that's probably to be expected. Goal kick taken long towards that left flank, headed away by Dykes. The goal scorer, of the match winner at this stage, is Gelson Fernandez to Sink Graven to Van de Beek. Gives it back to Gelson. That's a good ball, but it's a little bit overhit, and that should be the game. That's, I mean, that's that's the kind of pass that I, I'd like players to be making at this stage of a of a performance where you one nil up. You don't want them to be putting the ball into the middle of the box or anything like that. If it's going to go out, it needs to go out near the touchline, in the corner areas. So that's that's good. Yeah, we absolutely dominated the game. Fantastic stuff. So where does that leave us then? We remain third, but we're only four points now behind Den Hag. Just two points remaining behind Feyenoord. So. 
things are really looking up. I'm, I'm expecting this red bar. I mean, it's shrinking. It's shrinking all the time. So, yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Things are looking up on the improvements. 38 points. We, we're not a long shot. I'd say we're probably a bit of a long shot for the title, but we have won a lot of games now. We, I think we've won our last six or seven in the league. Uh, well, five. So, yeah, you know, good. Brilliant. Excellent. Where should we return then? So we've got Europa League football coming up soon. I think what we'll do, though, is we'll probably focus on the league. We'll assume that we'll beat Basel and we'll be back for that home game against Arda Den Haag. League title champion, perhaps. So, yeah, it's important that we, we manage to, to stick them and maintain our, our title push at this stage, which is something that, that I was not expecting to say. Do pop a like on the video for me. It really is lovely to see, and a sub as well would be amazing if you're feeling generous. Um... And any comments as well about the transfer window? Was it a bad window, good window? What do you think? Let me know. Do follow me at Knock It Wide on Twitter, and I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.